This is a tale of disappointment and a massive anticlimax. This is the worst NHL playoff series that's ever been played. The Minnesota Wild are a franchise that joined the NHL for the 2000-2001 season, and in the entirety of their existence, they've only made the Western Conference Finals once, and that was in the 2003 playoffs, uh, which was their third season in the league and their first time making the Stanley Cup playoffs as they squeezed in as the sixth seed that year. And they immediately upset the star-studded Colorado Avalanche. After going down three games to one in that series, they came back and capped it off with a dramatic Game 7 overtime win uh, in which Andrew Burnett scored the series-winning goal on Patrick Waugh. They then went on to win the second round against the Vancouver Canucks, who are also a very strong team. Again, they went down three games to one, and again, they won games five and six and capped it off by winning game seven, making the Western Conference Finals in their first playoff appearance and for the only time in their franchise's history. Now, the Minnesota Wild that year weren't exactly an offensive juggernaut, being only three years removed from having to get their talent from the expansion draft. They relied mostly on a defensive sort of neutral zone trap-like system set up by their coach, Jacques Lemaire, and they were... I think the seventh, they scored the seventh fewest goals in the regular season, but also were an incredibly strong defensive team and allowed very few goals to be scored on them. Now, when your team is not expected to go far in the playoffs and they find themselves in the final four, you're not necessarily expecting to win, but you at least want to see them put up a fight, show that they belong, and get some exciting moments along the way. You want them to go out with a fight and not with a whimper. And... When you're in the conference finals, this is your team's exposure to a wider audience when fans of all teams from across the continent and across the world tune in to watch the only four teams that have survived the culling up until this point. And you want your team to put on a show on such a big stage. The Minnesota Wild in the Western Conference Finals against the Anaheim Ducks, well, they were called the Anaheim Mighty Ducks at the time, did not do that. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Now, the Anaheim Mighty Ducks finished the seventh seed in the Western Conference that season. They actually uh, had the same number of points in the regular season as the Wild. They both finished with 95 points. And um, the Wild got the higher seed by virtue of having more wins in the regular season. Um, now, the Anaheim Mighty Ducks were sort of a mediocre team in the regular season. They scored a few more goals than the Wild, but they also allowed a few more goals. And again, like I said, overall, they were about equivalent in performance in the regular season as their opponents in the Western Conference Finals, the Wild. However, as soon as the playoffs started, the Mighty Ducks caught fire as they immediately eliminated the defending Stanley Cup champion Detroit Red Wings in four games. Um, and this was the Red Wings team that was just one year removed from being the legendary 2002 team that I talked about in a previous video. Ducks then went on to eliminate the very strong Dallas Stars in the second round in six games to book their ticket to the Western Conference Finals. And this was a bit of a theme going in. The Wild had to grind out long seven-game series. In the meantime, the Mighty Ducks were sort of cruising, and that would continue into this series. Now, like I said, the Wild weren't exactly um, a stunning offensive team, and they, got, they found success mainly in their defense. But... Um, over the course of the first two playoff rounds of these playoffs, they scored a very reasonable three goals per game, which is actually, in this small sample size, quite a bit more than they scored on average in the regular season. But facing the Mighty Ducks and facing a Jean-Sebastien Jaguer, who would go on to win the Conn Smythe Trophy that year and would record a 945 save percentage total in the playoffs, the Wild offense completely shut down. Now, for a bit more context on the Minnesota Wild offense... We don't need to go much further than to look at their roster's individual point totals. Uh, leading the way for the Wild in scoring that year was a 20-year-old Marion Gabrick, who managed 65 points in 81 games in the regular season that year. But that, that total of 65 points is only good enough for a tie for 41st place in the NHL as a whole in point scoring. And there are two players which were tied for second in scoring on Minnesota, Pascal Dupuis and Cliff Ronning, 
uh, both got 48 points in 80 games, which is good enough for a tie for 100th in scoring in the NHL as a whole. So not a team that's known for their offense, but we already knew that. They're relying on their defense to get this far in the playoffs. Now, about a week ago, the Minnesota Wild opened their 2021 playoff series against the Vegas Golden Knights. And that game ended one nothing in overtime, with the tie finally being broken on a goal by Joel Erickson Eck. And the first game of this Western Conference Finals went much the same, as the first period was scoreless, the second period was scoreless, the third period was scoreless, and yes, even the fourth period was scoreless this time, before the tie was finally broken at the 8.06 mark of the second overtime uh, on a goal by Peter Sikora, which gave the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim a one nothing series lead. Now, this is the Wild's first ever and only appearance on this stage, as we've mentioned before. And in their very first game, they managed to come out and score zero goals in nearly four and a half periods of hockey. And actually even more impressive than the fact that they went four and a half periods almost without scoring is the fact that the shots on goal were 39 for Minnesota and only 26 for the Ducks. And again, this is nearly four and a half periods of hockey, and Anaheim generated 26 shots on goal. Game two kind of went much the same, and the first period was scoreless again, but thankfully a goal was scored in regulation time, and the Ducks took a one nothing lead uh, midway through the second period, and in the third they added another goal to go up 2 nothing, and they would win the game 2 nothing. And the funny thing about this game is not just the fact that the Wild got shut out for the second game in a row, but also that... Both Ducks goals, the only two goals of this game, were both shorthanded. So there were zero goals scored by a team that had more than four skaters on the ice. The other thing about this series is that in all games but the deciding fourth game, the Wild actually outshot the Ducks, but it didn't matter because their offense was completely stagnant. And in the third game, much to the delight, I assume, of the people watching, a goal was scored in the first period, and in fact, a goal was scored within the first five minutes as Steve Rukin gave the Ducks a one nothing lead in the first. And in a stretch of six minutes, um, the Ducks scored three goals, two of them by Paul Correa and another one added by Stanislav Chistov. And the Ducks took a 4 nothing lead, and that would end up being the final score. So going into the fourth game, um, the Wild are on the road at this point, because remember, they had home ice advantage in this series. They're 3 nothing down, and they have literally yet to score a goal. And I can only assume people are tuning in at this point basically out of sadism, hoping that these fucks will maybe manage to be the first team ever to lose a playoff series without scoring a goal. However, they did manage to get themselves on the board, and they did it incredibly quickly. At the 4.37 mark of the first period, Andrew Burnett scored a power play goal to give the Minnesota Wild their first goal of the series, their only goal of the series, and their only ever goal in the Western Conference Finals. Now, I mentioned earlier that the Western, the Conference Finals is a stage that teams don't find themselves on that often, and you want to make a good impression for the people watching. And it took the Wild three hours, 32 minutes, and 43 seconds of live hockey action to score one single goal in this playoff series. So they finally grabbed the lead for the first time in the series. And how long did that lead last? It lasted exactly four minutes and 53 seconds. Adam Oates scored a power play goal to tie the game, and 9.31 into the second period, he'd score a second power play goal, giving the Ducks a 2-1 lead, which they would not would not relinquish, and they won the series four games to nothing, allowing only one goal. And in case you're curious, and I'm sure you're all curious, Jean-Sebastien Jaguer's save percentage for the Anaheim Ducks in that series was a 9.92. A 9.92, which, yeah, is absolutely unthinkable. And, um, of course, only three wild players managed a point in that series. Andrew Brunette, Pierre-Marc Bouchard, and Cliff Roning are the lucky guys to, to be the only ones to score in that series. And, in fact, um, the, series, the series was so offensively devoid of content that Manny Fernandez, the starting goalie on the losing team, had a save percentage of 943 as the losing goalie. 
it's it's really astonishing and this is basically it's it's I say it's the probably the biggest anticlimax in sports history. You have these dramatic comebacks from 3-1 down in the first round and in the second round. You make it to the biggest stage your franchise has ever been on and up until this point ever will be on. And they go out with such a massive whimper that it's absolutely astonishing. The Mighty Ducks would go on to the Stanley Cup Finals where they'd lose in seven games to the New Jersey Devils, thus proving the ultimate supremacy of neutral zone trap hockey, I guess. The Anaheim Mighty Ducks would go on to rebrand themselves to a slightly less stupid name, the Anaheim Ducks. They would win the Cup in 2007, thus completing their rise to, to Stanley Cup glory and eventually would crumble into ash and would finish last place in their division in the 2021 season. So in the end, everything is is misery. So there you go. Good night. And thank you for watching um, this story of really just absolute misery.